what I want to specifically talk about, we can talk about a lot of women's health issues, um, but I specifically want to talk about fibroids because that's something that I deal with every single day. And uh, just to kind of make it most basic, fibroids are benign tumors, so they're not cancerous. They're the most common tumor of the pelvis that women see, and 80% of African-American women have fibroids. So it is a huge problem. Particularly, I mean, not for all women, but particularly for women of color who disproportionately suffer with these benign tumors. So, what I'm here to tell you is no matter what your physician tells you about your fibroids, you do not have to have surgery, particularly hysterectomy. Um, you're getting a little flyer that shows the surgical options for fibroids on this infographic, but. Um, you don't need surgery. So that's if you take home one thing from this brief talk that I'm going to give, it's that you don't have to have surgery. No matter what you're told, get that second opinion. Because the differences are huge. Um, and as I say, nothing is more important than your health. And quite frankly, I'll see patients in the office that have done more due diligence on buying a car than their own health. And that's got to change. You've got to invest yourself. Before you invest in a business, and you get a business plan, and you're investing and all that, you got to invest in yourself and your own health. And as women, and I see this in my family, uh, my lovely wife and I have three kids, um, even though I'm a physician, who do you think is responsible for the health care of the family? The physician male or my wife? Seriously, no question. So when mom is not feeling well, the whole family is affected. So again, as nurturers, as women are, they tend to kind of take care of everyone else first. Got to be a little more selfish and kind of focus now on you, because it's really important. You have you affect a lot more than just yourself. So fibroids are these benign tumors, and they reside in the pelvis, and they're usually seen in women in their 30s and 40s and 50s, but sometimes in their 20s. And if they see them in the 20s, it's usually, again, African-American women, because they get them earlier, they get them bigger, and they get more symptoms then, and they're more likely to be treated. It is the number one reason, fibroids are the number one reason why women undergo hysterectomy in this country. And what I've been trying to do for over the past 25 years now is to correct that. There is no reason for women to undergo hysterectomy for fibroids, zero, none. But yet, that's what we've been doing. We've been doing it for a long time. Um, and so, hysterectomy is the second most common surgery performed in the United States. That may be surprising, because half the population, men, don't even have a uterus. So how is that the second most common surgery we do? And the most common reason why we do it are for benign disease. That doesn't make any sense. But yet, we keep doing it, because we've always been doing it. And again, that's got to change. Well, how do I know if I have these fibroids? Well, it's the most common reason why women have heavy periods. Now, sometimes women have these heavy periods for such a long time, they don't even realize it's abnormal. Um, people follow the Real Housewives. Uh, Cynthia was a patient of mine. I can say this because she was very public about it, and thank goodness she was. It's pretty brave. I mean, she's in the fashion industry, and yet she came out in something that's really kind of embarrassing. But she was at a Bravo event and basically stood up and in this beautiful white flowing gown and just blood just went everywhere. And it was horrible. She was embarrassed. But what was worse or just as bad is now that she's standing in a pool of her own blood and people are coming up to her. Can I get a selfie? Can I get a selfie? And she's like, I mean, are you kidding? And so she was just kind of backed into the elevator and had to change, and she was horrified. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And she said, no, I'm getting this taken care of, and she, she got her life back. Because people that have been suffering with this, they often will just kind of put up with this. You know, the pads and the change of clothes, and sometimes they can't work a couple days a month, they can't use the same linens, they sleep on plastic or newsprint or, you know, it's really suffering. There are over a million women in the United States right now suffering. We call them the silent sufferers. They've only been given surgery as an option, and they don't want that, and I understand why. So they suffer with it. 
it's not going to, fibroids would be rare for someone to die from fibroids, it's happened, but um, because of the amount of bleeding and the blood loss, but typically it's just a suffering, a miserable suffering. So they lose so much blood each month that they can't replace, no matter how much iron they take in or how much iron rich foods they eat, they become anemic. And, and your hemoglobin level, normal hemoglobin is like 11.7 to 12. And as that drops, because you're putting out in the blood is iron and hemoglobin, and as that goes out, they don't take enough in, so they run a deficit, kind of like our government with money. <laughs> they don't take in enough and they put out too much. And so now these got this deficit. And what happens with women that become anemic is they get tired and more tired and more tired and it gets to such a degree if it keeps on going they may get lightheaded they may get they may get dizzy they may pass out um, they may get migraine like headaches uh, they often chew and crave ice that's a really significant anemic symptom and I ask them I say are you chewing or craving ice and they're like how did you know <laughs> well that 64 ounce cup of ice on the floor it's kind of a hint, but yeah, it's a chronic anemic symptom. In fact, some of these women, they can't drive by a QT or a racetrack without pulling in and getting that big 64 ounce cup of ice. It's not that they have poor gas mileage, it's that they're anemic from their fibroids. And so all of this doesn't have to be, but they suffer with this because they go to their doctor and their doctor says they need surgery and they don't give them any other options. And I'm here to tell you there's a fantastic option we'll get to in a second, called UFE, uterine fibroid embolization. So they cause heavy periods, lots of bleeding. These fibroids are hard and firm, they're like rocks and they press on things. So depending on where they're located in the uterus will determine what the symptom is. But again, it's the most common reason why heavy periods because a lot of these fibroids are located centrally in the uterus, the uterus is hollow, but right along the lining, these fibroids live and they stretch the lining causing these heavy periods. If they push outwardly, they can press on pelvic nerves that cause pain. It can be anywhere in the abdomen or pelvis. It can run down the legs like sciatica, like somebody with a back issue. It can be on the bladder and press the bladder and cause urinary frequency. The bladder doesn't get to fill normally, so they have to go more often. And they may wake up in the middle of the night. So depending on where these fibroids are located, the big three symptoms are heavy periods, so Heavy, heavy bleeding, pelvic pain, and increased urinary frequency. So what, how do I know if I have this? Well, if you have any of those symptoms, and you're African American, sometimes you can even feel them, you should see a doctor about it. They will often examine you and sometimes say, you can feel them yourself, or sometimes the doctor feels them. Your uterus can get enlarged. It can make you look pregnant. That was the other reason that Cynthia was getting concerned, because she was looking pregnant. And there were all the paparazzi saying, well, who's the baby daddy? She, you know, and this and that. It's like, she wasn't pregnant. She had fibroids, okay? Like, but, you know, she was trying to be private about such things. Um, and so, there's a, another option here. And that's, again, called UFE. UFE is one of the biggest medical breakthroughs for women. I put it up there with the pap smear and the mammogram in terms of significance, but yet, most women never hear about it. Because the people that are the gatekeepers of women's health, gynecologists, are surgeons, and guess what they like to do? They like to cut you, they like to operate. But I'm a different type of doctor, an interventional radiologist, and our training is doing procedures that replace the need for any surgery, because we can get to anywhere in the body from the inside. We just need to get in. And once we get in, we can treat all sorts of things. Cancer, stroke, hypertension, peripheral vascular disease, in this case, fibroids. And so what we do is we gain access, usually at the top of the right leg, sometimes the left wrist, but anyway, we just need to get in. And once we get in, we just get to the uterus. So you may have heard of somebody having heart condition and they go up in, from, the, from the top of the leg and they go up in the heart and they inject contrast to see the coronaries and treat blockages in the heart. Well, we're going into the uterine vessels, there's a uterine artery on each side, and they branch like a tree, getting smaller and smaller branches till you get out to the leaves. The fibroids are the leaves of the tree. I know what size those tiny branches are, 
and I can flow direct particles to plug up all the branches to all the fibroids. The big trunk and the main branches of the uterus stay open, so the uterus stays alive, and I've had numerous children born after UFE. I've had three sets of twins born now. Um, and our births, unlike if you have a myomectomy, you must have a C-section. They won't let you have a vaginal birth, more surgery. Our births are typically full-term and vaginal. Now, you could get a C-section if that's what needs to happen, but it's not absolute and mandated. Um, so that's very nice. Um, once we've knocked out all the fibroids, and it treats every one of them, no matter how big, how many, no matter where they are, all of them get knocked out, which is great because that's typically a one and done scenario. So patients that we treat will come into our center. The procedure takes me about 30 to 40 minutes. They sleep through it, but no general anesthesia. The sedation is IV and local, much nicer. There's a brief recovery of several hours at our center. And the patients go home, like Cynthia did, with a Band-Aid at the top of the right leg. There's a recovery at home of about five or six days, although if you watched season six of The Real Housewives, you saw Cynthia go home the same day, and Nene was there trying to get her to shop at Lennox that night. <laughs> She's like, uh, Nene, uh, really? <laughs> I hope she didn't go. <laughs> but she, was, she had it on a Friday. She was doing a Bravo shoot Monday. Now, I don't recommend that. I say the typical recovery is about five or six days. So I tell patients to anticipate being out of work for a week. But people like Cynthia are building empires. They, even a week is too much for them. But I will then see patients at three months after the procedure. We'll repeat the imaging to make sure all the fibroids are dead and making sure the patient can tell they're better significantly. So usually it's OMG transformed better. But as long as they know they're at least significantly better and, and the fibroids are all dead on imaging, we know they're gonna do great. And so it is a real transformation for people. And it's a, this procedure should be offered to anyone that is told about hysterectomy for fibroids. Everyone should try this first, because obviously it's safer than surgery, it's less invasive, the recovery is much shorter, and importantly, and this is a really important point, is you get to keep all your parts. Now, that is something that just blows my mind on the gynecologists, particularly female gynecologists, who treat the uterus as if you can just throw it away after you've had your kids. It's like, oh, you've done having your kids, you don't, need that. you don't need that uterus anymore. Just have it out. The bottom line is it doesn't have to be. In fact, uh, if everybody will do me a favor and pull out their phone, Pull out your phone. We're going to have a little. We're going to have a little fun with this, and uh, we're also going to have some really nice giveaways here in a second. So get your phone out. But this was a campaign that we did. Um, July is Fibroid Awareness Month, so um, definitely, definitely hashtag Don't Lose Your You, um, because when a woman loses her you, her uterus. She often loses her Y-O-U. What makes you, you, a lot of it is your you, okay? We don't want people losing any of their U's. And with UFE, you get to keep all of your parts. And, and again, that's what's most important. And it's lost on people, because women that have hysterectomies, it changes them. It changes them psychologically. It changes them sexually. There's a lot of bone loss. Urinary leaking, I saw a commercial for Depends. <clears throat> it was a very attractive African-American woman, about, I don't know, mid-30s, maybe 40, and she was scooching on her skinny jeans over an adult diaper. And it's like, it's for Depends, it's like, they'll never know <laughs> your, your secret, or something <laughs> crazy. I'm like, what? I thought diapers are for grandma and grandpa not this attractive 30, 40 year old African-American woman. Well, the marketers, you know, Madison Avenue in New York, they know their audience. The average age of hysterectomy in this country is 39. And we've seen, say, I was at Tuskegee not long ago, seeing 20 year old in their 20s have already had a hysterectomy. But the average age, and that's tragic, I have daughters that age. But the average age is 39, so it's these young women having hysterectomies for benign disease, and now this woman is leaking urine 
because that big fibroid filled uterus is taken out and weakens the pelvic floor muscles and she's leaking urine and she's got to wear diapers underneath her skinny jeans. I mean, we got to stop this. That just does not have to occur.